right last time we saw these type of expressions like 3a plus b we call these as algebraic expressions now if i let's say if i set this equal to zero okay now from an expression this has become an equation equation as the word suggests you are equating something with something right uh, and the example of this would be if i have the same expression on the left side 3a plus b but on the right side i have another different expression let's say 3a squared b plus 5a squared okay so i can have an equation where two expressions are set equal to each other right all right let's look at an example of how GRE would test you on these. Let's say we have an equation 3x plus 15 equals 9x plus 2 times x plus 2. And the directions are to solve for x. Solve for x. Right. So how will we go about doing this? So let's let's first expand out this term so i'm going to multiply the two that's outside with each of the terms that are in there right so 3x plus 15 that stays the same equals 9x all right then i have 2 times x which will give me 2x and then i had 2 times 2 which will give me a 4 okay now what i can do on this right side is that i have these two terms which have we just have x, right? They're similar terms. So I can add them and this would give me 11x, right? Let's write everything else down the same. So 11x plus 4 on the right side and on the left side I have 3x plus 15. Now I want to solve for x here, right? So what you want to do is to have all the terms with x's on one side and all the terms with, with anything else. So in this case constants on the other side. So how about I want how about I I get all the x terms on the right side so I already have this 11x on the right side I want to get this 3x on the right side also so I want to move this 3x to the other side so one thing to remember is when you do that what happens is that if you have a term that's positive so this term has a positive sign in front it it's not shown but uh, it's assumed as positive so when when you take a positive term and put it on the other side of an equation, it becomes negative. So now, instead of a positive 3x, you will have a negative 3x, okay? Similarly, okay, let's just do this one step at a time. Now I can do the same with the constant here, plus four, I can take this to the other side. This is again a positive four, it will become a negative four on the left side. So I'll have 15 minus four equals 11x minus 3x. I did this in, in quite a few steps, but once you get good at it, you can do multiple things in one step. So now it's simple addition and subtraction. I have 11x minus 3x. That would give me 8x. 15 minus 4 will give me 11. Now I want to get rid of this 8 that's next to the x because I want only x. I want solve it for x. So to do that, now this 8 is being multiplied by x. So if I want to get rid of this 8, I want to put it to the other side. What will happen is that since it's being multiplied on the right side, it will divide on the left side. And I'll get 11 over 8 equals x. Another way to think about it is that I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 8. Okay? So this 8 and this 8 cancels, and I get 11 over 8 equals x. Same thing. Right? So, so two important things. First is that, uh, okay, so let me make this table for you to make it easier. So, if something is being added on one side, and when you take it to the other side, it will subtract. Okay, if something is being subtracted, and you take it to the other side, it will add. Okay, so you're switching signs as you move from one side to the other. If something is being multiplied, then it will divide on the other side. And vice versa, if something is dividing on one side, then it would multiply on the other side. But be careful on how you apply these rules because um, there are some things that might uh, complicate a bit. 
But overall, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure you have all seen these a lot, but this would be a good refresher. Let's look at another example now. So we have now one half a plus six equals five a. And we are now solving for a. Okay. All right. So, so now we have a fraction here on the left side. And fractions are kind of a not good looking. Right, so let's try to remove this fraction. Now the fraction has a two in the denominator. So how about I multiply both sides of the equation by a two? Okay, so this is an important thing. As long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, you can you are allowed to do that. Okay, so that balances the equation out. So you can then do that. So now you will multiply this two with the things on the left side. So see this two, all right, let me do it one step at a time just to clarify it. So two will multiply with the first term, then two will multiply with the second term. And then on the right side, two times five will just give you 10a. Now you see this two and this two will cancel out. You'll get a plus two times six is 12 equals 10a. Now I can bring this a to the other side. It's adding over here. So I'll subtract there, I'll get 9a equals 12 and I'll, to get rid of this 9 I can divide both sides by 9 again see doing the same thing to both sides of the equation is allowed so I get 12 over 9 for the value of a okay simple so that's how you take care of fractions in an equation just multiply with the denominator to get rid of the fraction all right let's do another question now example 3 this one involves exponents. So we have 3x plus 3x plus 3x equals 9 raised to x minus 2. Okay. In these type of problems, again, you're solving for x. So you have to solve for x. And this is just, just to give a heads up, this is an actual GRE question that I had on my own exam. Okay. You might get it too. Um, anyways. So these type of questions, your goal is to have everything with the same base. So you see over here, the base is 3, 3, 3 on the left side. And on the right side, the base is 9. So what you want to do is to have the same base throughout. Okay, so how about I want to change this 9 to a 3. Well, to, to make sure this is equal, I need to actually have a square. Because 3 squared is 9. And then I can have my power that's already there which is x to the minus 2 okay so that's the right side uh, I can do actually just keep going if I can keep going with this I know when I have a power raised to a power I can multiply these powers right and if I open the brackets here I'll have 2x minus 2 times 2 is 4 cool. what about the left side well I have this 3 to the x 3 times here and these are being added how about I factor out a 3 by x 3 to the x so then I'll just left with 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is just 3 raised to x times 3 right and the way to look at it is that I have three of these right so I can also write it as just 3 times 3 to the x because I have 3 of 3 to the x right it's just like if you have a plus a plus a well that's just 3a right now instead of a you have 3 to the x okay so either way uh, which are uh, helps you understand it work will work. Okay, so now you have 3 to the x times 3 uh, If you remember the one of the power rules is that when the bases are same powers can be added So you'll have 3 raised to x plus 1 because the power on this 3 is just 1 right, What next so now you are here at, at this place where you have the same base on both sides of the equation you have just one number on both sides and then you have your exponentials right so in this case what basically the equation is telling you is that the exponents have to be equal right because 3 and 3 are equal then the exponents are have to be equal to to make to keep this equality in other words you can just get rid of the base and say that your exponents are equal okay and now here if you solve for x you would get 5 okay cool question right it looks very very intimidating when we started out but solves pretty easily okay 
All right, moving on to more problems. So here we have three brothers divided a prize as follows. The oldest received two-fifths of it, the middle brother received one-third of it, and the youngest received the remaining one-twenty. What was the value of the prize? Okay, let's start by saying that the value of the price is x. Okay, so this is one of those word problems where you have to set up an equation and then basically solve for x. Um, so if, if x is the total price, oldest got two-fifths of it. So I can write that as two-fifths of it of what? Of x. So I have two-fifths of x. Then the middle brother got one-third of it. That's just one-third of x. And the youngest got 120. Okay, and I know all these three parts have to add up to the total value of the price, which I just said is x. Okay, now I have an equation where I have to solve for x. Well, there are fractions here again, uh, and the best way is to, to clear out the fractions. Uh, for this one, I'll multiply both sides by 15. So I'll multiply by 15 on both sides. And the reason being, 15 is the multiple of 5 and 3, okay? The easiest way to do that, uh, to do that is just do 5 times 3, you have 15. And that way, both 5 and 3 will go away. So let's do that. Um, so when I do the, when do I 15 times the first term, I'll get, let me write that down, step by step. 15 times 2 over 5x plus then I'll have 15 times 1 third x plus 15 times 120. Okay, I'm going to continue working on the left side because the right side is just 15x, right? So I want to simplify the left hand side and then we'll set it equal to each other. So now, simplifying the first term here, 15 times 1, 15, oh, 5 times 1, 5 times 3, and then 3 times 2 will give me 6x. So I have 6x for the first term. Second term, 3 times 1, 3 times 5, 5 times 1 is 5, so I get 5x plus 15 times 120. I'll just keep it as 15 times 120. I can further simplify this because 6 and 5 will give me 11x plus 15 times 120. Now I can write my right hand side, which is 15x. Okay, so how about I take this 11x, move it to the other side, and then when I do that, the 11x is positive here, so it will become negative. Um, so I'll have 15 times 120 equals 15x minus 11x will give me 4x. Right, let's divide both sides by 4. Okay, 4 times 1, 4 times 30, and this 4 and 4 will cancel out. And this will give me x equals 30 times 15 is 450, right? So a lot of arithmetic here. But the question in itself was pretty straightforward once you set up the equation. Cool. Let's look at another example. So this is a question where, which is very typical on GRE, where you are given an expression with two variables. So, so like over here we have if x is positive, you have this equation which has both has an x and y, which of the following is an expression for x in terms of y. It's just asking you to have x on one side and everything else on the other side, right? So let's do it. So we have y equals 5x squared plus 3. How about I take this plus 3, move it to the other side. Now this is a plus 3, when it goes to the other side it will become a negative 3. Alright, let's keep going. I want to get rid of this 5 also, right? Well, this 5 is multiplying on the right side, okay? So how about I take it to the left side? So when I take it to the left side, it will divide. So I'll have this whole thing divided by 5. Now, keep in mind that you cannot take the 5 before moving the 3, okay? Because the addition term takes precedence before the, the multiplication term here. So first you have to get plus 3 on the other side, which is negative 3, and only then you can get rid of the 5, okay? So now you have 5, y minus 3 over 5 equals x squared, okay? Now you just want to solve for x, so one way to do that is just to take the square root, well, the only way to do that is to take the square root, all right? So you take the square root and you'll get x, 
on the right side and u x is equal to square root of y minus 3 over 5 which is p okay pretty simple all right one more of these exponential ones which i love actually now let's do this with the same color red uh, so again the rule here is that you want everything on the same base and the same base is usually the smallest base so 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 it's better to get eight to the to become a two with something with a base of two rather than making this two eight all right so i know actually i can write eight as two cubed two cubed is just eight and on the left side what i'll do is this is a, uh, an exponential over an exponential so if i take the denominator one to the top the powers would subtract right so i'll have 2a minus 1 minus b plus 1 okay and all of this would equal to 2 to the th 3 now the base is that same so i can get rid of the base and the exponentials would come equal to each other so i'll, I'll distribute this negative out so i'll have negative b and negative times positive 1 will give me negative 1 equals 3 which is the exponential on the right side and a minus b if I add the negative 1 and negative 2 will give me negative 2 equals 3 3 plus 2 will give me 5 so I have a minus b equals 5 okay I'm comparing a on the left side with b on the right on on column b so well if a minus b is a positive number, it must be the case that a is greater than b. And you can prove that yourself by picking some numbers. But a is the right answer here. Right. Let's do one more example. So here we have 1 over x plus 1 over y equals 1 over c. And we are asked to solve for x in terms of y and c. Alright, so let's attempt this. Uh, it's fractions which are ugly and you always want to get rid of the fractions so the question is what should we multiply both sides of the of this equation to get rid of the fractions well the easiest thing is to multiply by the pr product of all the denominators that you have so you have x you have y you have c you multiply both sides of the equation by that product x y z okay so let's do that oops Oops, I am having some problems here. Hopefully they will go away. Okay, seems to have resolved. All right, so I've multiplied both sides of the equation by x, y, z. Now let's do x, y, z times my first product. And my first term inside the bracket, see, the x will cancel with the x. I'll be just left with y, z. Similarly, for the second term, the y will cancel with the y, and I'll be left with x, z. And on the right side, the z will cancel with the z, and I'll be left with x, y. Okay, now remember, I want to solve for x. So let's have all the terms with x on the one side. So I'm going to take this term of x, take it to the right side. It's adding over here. So on the other side, it will subtract. Okay, so I'll take it here. So I'll have x, y, oops, x, y minus x z and on the left side i'm left with y z okay now how about i want to isolate the x because i want only x on one side so how about between this term and this term i factor out the x because both of them have an x so i factor out x i'll be left with y in the first term and on the second term i'll be left with the z right okay now, again, I want to isolate the x. So how about I divide both sides by this expression y minus z? Okay, because that will allow me to have, have x by itself. So now this cancels with this, and I'm left with x being equal to yz over y minus z. Cool. Isn't this fun? I hope you find this one too. All right.